Hello everyone and welcome to another solo guide for expert maps. This time we are doing the map Sunbridge. We are playing solo, we are playing a budget deck, so no rares, no ultra rares, just comments and uncommons. And also we won't be doing the gate switching trick because it might get fixed in the future and then you don't know how to do the map. Also, switching every 30 seconds is really annoying. Like, really annoying. It does not mean uh, this tactic is a lot easier. Um, you have to pay attention to a lot of things. Mm, we will start with Frost and focus down those units as fast as we can, so we can get this, uh, to destroy this building. Uh, you can pull units back a bit so they don't get attacked. Okay, four units is for now more than enough. Um, since we are not going to switch, we will also start to get attacking. If you find it too hard, you can switch the first time. So this gate is closed and this is open. So you have a bit of more time to prepare for the attack wave. Basically we want to defend with Northern Keeps and we want to use the ability of the Northern Keep to make our units immune to damage. You need, normally you only need two Northern Keeps, you can build three, just to be sure. Just getting back and healing up our units. So now you could switch swap once. But it's not really worth it. Okay, we are setting up three. At least I'm trying to set up three. Well, guess we will stay at two and see how, the, how it works out. Don't forget you need energy. We use our towers to do the main damage on the walls. Both can attack, so you have to place it like this. Now get your units into position. So you will have to defend a lot of waves for a very long time. And during the defense, you also have to kind of push and destroy the skate. So now I will set up my third tower. You see, there's the first wave that will attack us. And you will use the trench. Also, put your units up front so they tank those Twilight Slavers, and if they explode, you still don't get any damage, so it's all fine. Also, try to focus your towers on like the units that die fast. And don't let them focus those bugs, because the bugs don't get a lot of damage. And there is a second wave. Now let's see, okay, this is ready. Focus the backline a bit. So the gate will now, the operator will get destroyed. And if that happens, both gates open and you get attacked continuously. Um, but the waves will stay like the same, it will stay at the, cr at the small, I mean small, <laughs> it's not really a small wave, it's, as you can see, it's still a enormous attack wave. So this is like, so after three or four attacks you get like a bit of a breathing time and this is this time you have to use to destroy and take over the fortification. 
don't take the end the power wells if you get this um no this is not a wave so i guess it's like the minute six or something okay always try to swap um at like one one second left because you have like a small delay when this is getting activated We will we will defend the fortification with time vortex and a furnace. Okay, now now is the time to do to deal some damage and then go back. Now we get a big wave. Let's see four. Three, two, one, and activate this one. As you can see, I only use like two, swapping between these two. So basically, you only need two towers, but the towers also do a lot of damage and they help getting through the walls a lot faster. Okay, kill the archers. And then take out the fortification. This should be the, the time gap you get. You only have to kill 50% of this fortification for it to get destroyed. So it's basically this part and one of the gates. Yep, and then it's, it's down and you get attacked. You might activate one, I will do it, just to make sure I don't lose units, because I will need them to defend on the walls and the next attack waves will be big. So we get rid of one of the fortifications. Okay. Get into, grab your shadow orb. Get rid of the towers, because you will need all the energy. If you build it, you can see the attack. And it's better to do this early so you don't get this wave and an attack wave at the same time set up the first like six walls you can use gl glaciation but right now it's not needed your units can take some damage you will need all the energy because this wave is massive you should get you put the units back so they can heal up. One should be enough for now. Because you might need glaciation at this point. Yes, this is not how we are supposed to go. Because as you can see we can we get a, like a double wave. Uh, defend this wall first because the units get attacked from the archers. You can also use a cold snap. But basically you want to set up your towers as fast as possible. And you might lose your units, you can pull them back a bit. Or you probably lose them. It's not a big deal. Holding your wall is far more important. Okay, now we have two towers. And we use the towers to focus down the archers. And we have to set up a furnace somewhere here. I guess... Otherwise your towers won't attack as fast, but... I mean, still fine. Okay, put your guys back. We still want to use archers on the walls. Like two towers isn't enough. I guess we can set it up like here.
or here. No, I guess here it gets attacked. Yeah, that's good. It doesn't need to have range for everything. Just getting a, a few melee units is fine. After you set up your defense, and the waves will continue to come at you, you start to taking the, the power wells because you will need all the energy. So we take those two power wells, we take this one, and then we take this one. All while still having an eye on the defense. You use your tower to take out those um, ranged units, so they don't kill your um, master archers. As you can see, the furnace is working, you get a lot of energy, you use it to build the power well. And then you replenish your wall. At least on the right side you need three units to kill all the archers and you use um, also you can open those gates because you the enemies can't access this but it helps you running from left to right use a glaciation to defend those three walls I guess but yeah so you know, take them you get a double wave here as you can see And now we should freeze and spawn a lost wanderer. I said spawn a lost wanderer and don't run somewhere. So your units can ignore frost resistance and your towers can ignore too. Okay, while this works, we gotta pull this dude to us. Also, it's good because um, the Wanderer will start up um, shielding your units so they don't die. Uh, nice. Nice shielding, guy, dude. Okay. Um, don't forget you use the units to pull back. See how far he follows us. Far enough so the tower can attack him. Okay. Don't forget to close the, the door. Okay, now we take this one and we grab this one. I guess we swap those two because they don't heal up on this position. Okay, we took this one. Nice. Now let's pull this one closer. So this is the second breathing room. It's about after six minutes and now the waves will continue. But we use the time to... It's a double wave again. Um, we defend here, we take this, we send him back, we freeze the back line, and then we use the towers to focus fire down the archers, and we use your, you use, use your archers to kill the other archers. Okay, you can still attack this one, nice. You can also manually shield with the Wanderer. And now we have to take our tier 3. Um, don't rush. Defending tier 3 isn't easy because you don't have a wall. So you, you need enough energy to defend it. To take like the monument and defend it. Okay, we swap. 
and another wave, another double wave. Put you guys in the middle so that everyone gets the, at least the towers sh should get the buff. And another wave. We can freeze this one. You can also summon a second um, Lost Wanderer, but the problem with two Lost Wanderers, they start to shield themselves, like, and then you don't really want a lot. You just wasted like energy on this one. You can pull them back from the wall to give them some time to recharge or to heal and then someday the archers will attack you. Let's go up here and let's, let's go up here. Okay, So everyone gets the buff. Good. Now we use a few of the dancer. I guess four are enough. And we go around here and get rid of the hate casters. You also can use, uh, if you need more defense, you can use some um, of the Lost Dancer and place them here, so they shoot all the time up here. You can also set up another tower here. No, we lost one. Does it matter? It doesn't. As you can see, they just shielded them themselves, so it's like, why? You're not even attacked. those back so they don't die. Get another dancer and now also use the one with the fire affinity if you wanna like use it to get rid of the buildings. Otherwise you can use um, the shadow affinity one because it sh uh, deals double damage against um, humans and I guess those are humans. No, it's it's orc. And th those are humans. So yeah, it's okay. If they die, it's okay. All the their main job is just to kill the hate caster. And they did this. So job done. They even killed a lot of the pensioners. Okay. Then let me think. <sighs> we go to up like 750 energy. We take 250 for the monument. So we have like 500 left. We need to set up a breeding grounds, two horrors, and some healing wells. So 750 might be not be enough. We might need more, and I just lost some units up here. So just respawn. So it's a triple camp, so or triple. So use some crowd control. As you can see, the they will break through soon. So use another glaciation. And we use another freeze. Sometimes you have to do this. So we go to up to 1100 power and if we get a... No, we don't get... You, you can see up here if you get like some breathing space. And if you get... This is your time. I guess we set up another tower up here. Just to be sure. We 
use it just to make sure they don't break through your hmm. and another wave and this is how it works here there's a lot of uh, to defend oh we all also lost one one of the wanderers don't forget, if you freeze, you also have to use your towers to, to tell them to attack the freezing ones. Otherwise, they will always shoot at the front. Um, that's attacking. Good. I mean, the, those towers have a lot of HP, like 3000 HP. They don't go down easy. Okay, guess this is the time. Well, you're not. Nope. Nope, this is not the time. And as we can see... <laughs> don't forget to close the door. Um, let's do it like this. I guess we have to sneak a unit up here. I'm just not, I'm, but I think if, if we go up here, oh god, look at this. I'm not sure if we pull the next camp. I, I guess we do. Let me check. Yeah, we have a hate caster here. So if you run up here, we pull this camp. Um, we don't want this. Yeah. Can we pull them up to the door? No. But the. Okay. Um, I guess we go from this side. We also will use some um, dancers to defend the assault. Uh, Uh, after this we go, so we go now While they are still fight It seems like a good opportunity The hard part is always finding the, the one window you get um, You can set up a small defense Just to make sure that you don't get overrun from like this wave. As you can see, you don't get a lot of time. But I don't want to waste another 80 energy, so we just tell the dude to come here. Okay, set up your breeding grounds. Now we have also Oink. For crowd control. And when the breeding grounds is done, we are spawning some horrors. My dude is fighting. That's not what he was supposed to do. Okay. Even if you lose the T3 now, it's okay. We, we can get it back all always but you have to pull back for now to make sure we don't lose our horrors because we need the horrors to push up to here and start defending with the horrors and the horrors can do it because they have like triple attack
problem is um, all those slavers, the explosions from the slavers. If you have a, like a triple pull, that's a lot, even for horrors. And we don't have uh, nature right now. Okay, let's go. Next is on the way, so we build a power well, so that our units can heal. And then we set up some healing wells. So our horrors get healed all the time. We set up a healing garden. And a few healing wells. Then we, I guess we can grab this power well as well. Because now we are determined to defend this place. If we are sure we have secured this one. That means we set up a breeding grounds and get another horror. Also, if one of your horrors will die, just use an offering on him so you get a charge back. So I'm sure we, I'm, I've secured this one. So I'm getting rid of all the stuff. I need all the energy I can get. As you can see, that's 700 energy. And then we set up a furnace. And a fifth one. So the waves get stronger now. So you get like uh, devastators and negators. At least you don't get bugs because they will s take a lot of the energy back. Now we wait for the furnace to work and give us our, back our energy. And then we can push and take up T4. I'm not sure what this guy, these guys are doing, but okay. I mean, even the monument will be enough to deal with them. Okay. While we are fighting, you take your T4. So it doesn't matter what you take, because I'm just playing one orb of everything. And then we split them. And delay them a bit. And we can get rid of those stuff. Yeah. Who could have thought? The guy is attacking my monument. Okay. Um, no. Can, can you stop attacking this tower? Just leave it alone. The tower didn't do anything to you. Mm, the breeding ground. Then we set up our horrors. Try to to stack them so the damage they get will be split a bit more more even. And you don't have like one or two horrors tanking all everything. And one more healing well. So gardens heal 3% each second. Oh, it's 5% every two things, so it's 2.5% uh, per second. And the healing well heals like 50 HP. Up to 275 HP per second, and but has to recharge with a 50 HP per second rate. Okay. Now... 
we start replacing our horrors with giant worms. This is our main attacking force. And if you are smart, you will place them at the breeding grounds, not like me. Um, and then you... So our first objective is not getting this one, because we can always get to this one. We have to take out this one. And you have a, a dragon somewhere here. I mean, I guess you can just take out this one, fly up here, take out this one, and then get get back. Um, now we start doing this. We spawn cultists, sacrifice them, get another giant worm charge, and then repeat this. So we get a lot of dragons very fast. Now we take out this pot. Because flying up here to kill niggas then flying back up to here. I mean I guess it's possible. Not sure what is better. So kill them. So let's take let's summon six dragons. If I only fly with like two, they will die. Mm, also set up a furnace. Get rid of the dragon. Set up so your units don't get hit a lot. And now just fly up. And since the gates are broken, you have like free passage. And there is no giant army that's waiting for you here. Um, you should probably take out the, this camp first. You can activate the healing gardens to double the healing you, you deal and then you just... I'm taking this out so I, can, uh, I have... Um, all the time. Try to set up a fr frost on the uh, giant dude. Summon a wanderer. I mean you can also play double frost and then use north stars but this is easier yeah um okay just take out this one heal your units take out the uh, army shrine there is no reason killing everything other than taking the chest but then you need also melee units here so it's not worth it Get your dragons together so you can fly up to here. And let me set up this one as on a short key. Okay. I will activate this and heal my units. And as you can see, there are already some armies. Make sure you don't get destroyed. Okay, j just kill the ones in the way and then just go through. If the shrine is selective, just heal. Did we lose a dragon? No, that's amazing. Okay, um, we have not enough unity space, so kill the guy that's not needed anymore. It's okay if we lose the horrors now because we all we all we want is dragons. We summon cultists, we kill them, we get another dragon. So we have eight dragons now. Let let us be fast, just focus this one. And you use the maelstrom to defend this pot. Just kill it and then go back. 
activate the garden because it also doubles the healing you get from the garden passive. Heal up your units. Um, summon another dragon. We have nine dragons, this should be enough. I'm not sure what my dragons like to attack this one, this spot. So now you take your army. Um, important is, so first off you need the uh, guys here because you need ground presence. Um, you use three dragons to attack each one, basically. Because they have L counter, they kill them pretty fast. And as you can see, it didn't work. Okay, so we get it this time. Nice. And now I just focus the big dude to set up the defense from um, Stone Shell, doubling healing, just setting up healing, and I'm. I lost one dragon. And you can just crowd control the giant dudes. And just focus fire. Replay your defense spell. And your ritual of recovery and regrowth just heals against all the damage that they deal. And you are done. So as you can, you can see, I took me like 25 minutes to get up to tier 3 because of all the attacking and the energy we need. But then it's pretty fast. And that's how you do it. Also this is not a usual way if you play with two players and you don't want to use the swap trick. You just like defend three waves or four, wa four waves. And, th and in the meantime your other player attacks and then you swap. Let's see, I guess I have them. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it, and if yes, then give me a like, give me a subscribe, and see you on the next solo guide. Bye bye.